Friday. It's June 10th. It's 2022. Um, this is a weird day. Um, I'm watching Channel 7 um, news at noon. Um, but previous to that, I was speaking, Linda was putting away some dishes and we were speaking and all of a sudden she said something out of left field. And she said, oh, well, you were a something child or you were something teenager. And I was like, what was that? I was a what? And she said the word again. It did not stick with me. And I was like, now how do you figure that? Because it was, it was what they call a generalization, where it's something that happened once, but for some reason in her mind, it was an all-the-time thing. And she said, um, one of your friends, the red-headed friend from Oyster Bay, had a call Dad and I and said you'd been drinking. And I was like, wait, what? And then I had to think about it. And I'm like, I know that there was one time Brian Herman invited me after school somewhere. And then I woke up on Nick Santarelli's lawn. But Mullally wasn't there, the redheaded kid. And I'm like, so I said to her, I'm like, yeah, I was, I said, but I didn't drink. Or I don't think I drank. I don't know what happened. I blacked out. And again, now after being hit in public as an adult with a sting in the side of my, right underneath my ribs, from the behind with I don't know who and I wasn't expecting it and then blacking out again. Um, it becomes this whatever. Um, and I'm like, but I mean, like, I'm the girl who went to college and never went to a dorm party, ever. Not one. Um, sat in my dorm room, did my homework, read my books, and then went to the gym, went to the... Th but everything alone. I didn't know anybody there. Um, and there was not, like, a big campus presence that I... I didn't live by the quad, what they called the quad. Um... And so, and even the people that I did know, I went off campus with them if they invited me. But that was like special invitation. Um, so I'm like, I really don't get where you make these generalizations and tarnish my reputation, like as if I was this wild kid. And she was just like, well, I mean, like, I'm like, it, these aren't even my, you're not even telling my story right. Um, and like, this is the mother figure. Like, you expect her to at least get your reputation correct, which she hasn't. Um, and then I'm watching this Leave No Trace, a hidden history of the Boy Scouts. Like, they mention it today out of all days after she does this generalization today that's not even my truth. It happened once, but there were these weird circumstances around it. And then I'm thinking as like an investigator and like, I don't want this to happen to other kids on Long Island. I'm like, so you show up after school. The only witness are the people that might know what happened. And then you get accused of drinking as if it was your fault, which it wasn't. Um, and so, and like, again, I don't know if something was like added to the beverage that made the drunk feeling more like, and I don't even remember really drinking. I remember I'm asking if I wanted to go after school down towards the, the town of Oyster Bay, which I said, yeah. Um, but again, there was a couple of these... They were rare, um, but it's kind of like one of those things on Long Island. Like, who do you even trust? I mean, if you can't trust the kids you go to school with, but then again, here we are at school shootings and all sorts of things. I mean, my day was school poisonings, clearly. 
and then not remembering it, and then everybody making it like, oh, no, no, it was just a, a you were drinking, and you're like, no, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case, because it's not my thing, but... Um, so anyway, so, and then it, it doesn't leave a trace, and then it makes it like, how do you even defend yourself, your honor, your virtue, your own integrity, so your life doesn't fall apart, and you don't get thrown into a chasm of nothingness with nobody to even defend your honor, because now my parents believe that I'm some provocative teenager because it happened once and that's the way they keep telling the story in this generalization that wasn't how it actually was leave no trace by abc news studios invest oh, of America. 82,000 men have come forward with claims of sexual abuse, exposing how the Scouts failed to protect its members from predators. The film premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival last night with a release on Hulu next Thursday, June 16th. And director Irene Taylor is joining us now live. And this is the other part, is that Santarelli had something to do with the fire department and then there was Mulally, who went to St. Dominic's, who lived in the same vicinity. So if they found me somewhere, um, and they said it looked like I had been drinking, even though I wasn't. But again, girl, after school alone, and then looks like could be, even though it wasn't. And then that story gets passed forward. I don't know how it got written or documented, but didn't fit the pattern for which drinking was like a thing that I did often or pursued trouble often wasn't the case. Although this is like the storyline, though, that they seem to be wanting to shove me in in order to, like, do whatever it is that they did in order to prevent, like, success in my ability to marry for some reason. But all of these high school exposures, I don't understand why they put trouble in the path, even though I tried to divert from it, but... I with more Irene. Thanks for joining us. This is really an extraordinary investigation. How did the documentary come about? I live in Portland, Oregon, and our state Supreme Court back in 2012 made a disastrous decision for the Boy Scouts, which is that they forced 10,000 perversion file. And the reason why Boy Scouts is important is because somewhere... There's, like, the police league of important people who don't want to get involved, but you know there's the possibility of these no-trace files, which lead to other things. And I seem to have, not because I pursued it, but it's pursued me, and there's different court systems in this particular close location, and that poses more risk. For the innocent, especially when the good old boys have somehow decided to, like, it's just easier to ignore it and it'll just go away since there's no trace on my end. These are files that the Boy Scouts kept. They referred to them internally as their perversion files. They forced them to release 20 years of those files to the public. Once those were published in the LA Times and available on websites, people were able to look up their abuser from the 1970s, 1980s, 19, late 1960s. I don't know how you look up an abuser. I don't know how you research it, how you find it. I don't have that level of helpful sort at my like arm's length where I can walk up and ask a question to. And they found that a cascade of 
lawsuits started coming at them. You can really draw a direct line from the release of those files in my home state of Oregon. Uh, the release of those files really have been uh, what's led them into bankruptcy now. Yeah, so it was a watershed moment, and you spoke with many of the survivors in the documentary, and many of them are still coping with the trauma of being abused. What are some of the lessons that you learned from them? I think people who are sexually abused like good premise good like structure that we really believed in as kids that the generation before us was built on this and built on this trust and like they were going to do right by us yet yeah, it as far as I'm concerned did not work out in the local area the way that the rest of the country might have participated in this expectation of the inheritance and the inheritors and that kind of thing in the cycle of life and whose shoulders do you stand on well it depends because in new york i don't know if the rest of the states still went along with this motif and pageants for peasants but um my particular situation there was no brothers and sisters, there was just me, and it was a different whatever. Uh, what I have learned from making this film is that people who are sexually abused um, may identify as a victim or may identify as a survivor. And uh, as several of the men in the film say, their journey has really been from going from victim to survivor. Survivor is a, is a name they give themselves that gives them more control and more power, I think, over their mind and over their lives. Sure, a way to get through the tragedy of what they've already lived through. Yeah. Um, s uh, such interesting topic. Leave No Trace. Thank you, Irene, for talking with us today. Leave No Trace, a hidden story of the Boy Scouts streams on Hulu June 16th and premieres in theaters in New York and Los Angeles the same day. Oh, we are counting down to Sunday's National Puerto Rican Day. Per and now what's even more frightening is that in, like, Lynn and Lou are not part of, like, well, Lynn anyway is not part of, like, this social country club or whatever. Um, but I've heard, if she's asked, I've heard her repeat this story wrong. Um for which I usually correct her immediately. Um, but for some reason, and I'm like, are you trying to make me look bad? Because she says, like, it's so innocent that she's not, but it really, after so many years, I'm just like, there's just too many things adding up to, like, something's really not right. Star 1978, Star 8378, Nicole Cataruza, it's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.